I need a comb brush. Come on in, chat. Come on in, primetime squad. How's everybody doing this wonderful Monday? Hopefully all is well, all is blessed, <laughs> and everybody is having a wonderful evening. Come on in. We're going to be discussing, um, ooh, I was about to say married to medicine. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was the last one. Um, we're going to be discussing housewives of ATL, the real housewives of ATL. And the episode just came on um, last night, and I wanted to review it last night, but I was tired. I was, whoo, I was beat. I was like, mm -mm, I can get one, one out of me, one live, and that's it. <laughs> so I didn't come back later um, last night like I wanted to. But anywho, I'm here today with a, a new review for the Atlanta Housewives, and it is season 11 episode six and the title of the show was called whining and dining so i will get started as soon as a few more people come into the room oh yeah and also make sure you like the video on your way in and also make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel if you are not already a subscriber and also don't forget on instagram um you can also subscribe to my youtube channel which is Tanya Knows No Limit. And my other YouTube channel is Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. And those of you on YouTube who follow me, also make sure you follow me on Instagram, Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. Hey, Darrell on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know if you watch the Housewives of um, ATL, but that's what we'll be discussing tonight. <laughs> And again, it's season 11, episode six. So um, feel free to comment in the chat anything about the uh, topics or anything about the cast or what you thought of the episode. Um, the, it was called Whining and Dining. And I think that was a very appropriate title for this show. <laughs> but the show um, has started off with Cynthia and her ex, uh, Leon. And I have always liked Leon. Um, I know a lot of y'all um, remember Leon from Waiting to His Hell. That's where most people remember him from. Um, but he's a pretty dedicated father, you know, pretty involved with Cynthia's daughter, Noel, and she looks just like him, just like her dad. But, um, Cynthia and him are sitting around and discussing a little bit of Cynthia's relationship, but more of Noel because she'll soon be attending college. Um, the one thing I've always liked about them two is no matter what, even though, you know, after they separated and everything, after she got pregnant, no matter who they were involved with, um, as far as relationship wise, they've always had a great co-parenting understanding and not too many people, like especially women, would allow their child's father to spend the night over their house. I mean, when I see them coming down from the upstairs, I was like, uh, okay, um, is this cool with Cynthia's man? <laughs> and that's the reason why most women wouldn't even allow that, especially their daughter. It's not like it's a little kid and they have to, you know, the parents spend the night, you know, because the child is sick or, you know, something like that. Their child is all the way grown, about to go to college. And he spent the night. Now, a lot of women wouldn't allow that if they were involved in a relationship because y'all already know. You already know them old jealousy demons have been a took over with that man. <laughs> He'd be like, I ain't no other man spending night at your house. Um, I, I, I need to come over. But speaking of men, Cynthia's man, I guess, since he's on the other side of the United States, he might not be around anyway, <laughs> regardless if you want to spend a night or not. Um, because he lives in L.A., you know, on the West Coast. But anywho, um, don't nobody really want to ruffle no feathers, you know, when it comes to relationships. But with the kind of relationship that they have, you know, everybody ain't got it like that. So I'm glad that they do because, again, um, their daughter, Noelle, she's on her way to college. And Cynthia, although she's, um, that's her only daughter and she's really, like, overprotective, um, I'm glad Leon is kind of like 
he kind of balances it out because Cynthia, she was doing too much. She was doing too much. I'm like, this child is about to go to college, not kindergarten. <laughs> the way she was hovering over her and babying over her, her daughter was like, uh, mom, I'm grown. Stop, you know, but <laughs> anywho, um, but I was quite surprised, you know, when uh Candy and Todd was out with Shamari and uh Ron. Um, Shamari brought up the history of their open relationship again, you know, after Ron was already pissed off after he found out that Shamari had revealed to the ladies, you know, before a couple of episodes back that, you know, they had had an open relationship back in the day. Um, it didn't turn out too well as far as, you know, them messing around with other people but in the end they did decide to stay together and they stuck it out and you know they're raising their twins together and everything but we finally found out like the real issue or the main issue um it was basically you know yes ron he was sleeping around with other women but to him all he said it was just sex nothing more just sex you know some men can detach themselves from sex, and that's why most men cheat and don't really seem to have a problem with it or expect women to forgive them over and over and over again if they cheat because it's like, oh, I don't love her, baby. I love you. You know, that ain't nothing but sex. She wasn't nobody important, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, please forgive me. <laughs> but uh, while he was like, you know, just having sex, just sowing his wild oats, um, Shamari, on the other hand, was sleeping around with women too. Uh, but she made it seem like she had, you know, grew feelings for somebody besides her husband, you know, somebody outside their relationship. Um, so that seems to be what the big issue was with Ron and why it seemed like when he found out she had brought it up to the ladies, it seemed like a really, really sore spot for him that he didn't want to talk about. He was, he was angry. He was upset, but, um, she did end up bumping her head and coming back to her senses and realized that, you know, she wanted to be with Ron, the father of her children. That's who she really loved, and that's who she really wanted to be with. But also, I think uh, Ron and Shem Shamari, I think they felt really comfortable talking about it, you know, with Candy and Todd, since they've also had a third-party experience before. Now, Candy says it was one. <laughs> she says it was one experience so we're going to go with that <laughs> but anyway um are y'all open to you know stuff like that you know ladies would you be open to stuff like that you know third party experiences with your men i know some men this is like what they dream of this is on their bucket list you know having a three way with their wife or their girlfriend you know but uh would that be something that you'd bless your men with <laughs> me particularly um I really don't want to be involved with no kind of female in no kind of way. So it would have to be a no for me. It would just have to be a no for me. Um, maybe if I was, you know, leaning towards the same sex thing, you know, nah, nah, can't do it. Nope. I <laughs> can't do it. But, you know, would that be something that you would do with your man? And also, would that be something your man would be down with? Because believe it or not, not all men are interested in threesomes. Some men is perfectly fine, perfectly happy with their relationship and being with one woman all the time. So, you know, not every man, you know, be sitting around dreaming about that <laughs> and wishing on it. But um, then Candy just had to bring up the hot dog guy again, a.k.a. Portia's new man, Dennis. Now, <laughs> like Shamari said, though, so, um, that is some serious ish i mean okay it's one thing to tag somebody's name on your body a lot of people go through life and they end up tatting at least one person's name on their body i don't have any tattoos if i do get some it'll probably be my mom rest in peace her name or you know my two sons you know my grandma you know something like that but um not does this man only have one name, but as you know, he has several different women's names on his body. Um, I don't even think I could do one name. 
I'm, I'm serious. I don't think I knew one man's name. Um, some of the exes I had, um, I might say I probably could have came close. If we would have ended up staying together, maybe came close, but I'm not sure if I would ever do it. Even if I had an option of covering it up, you know, some people, you know, they get somebody's name on them years down the line. Uh, they hate each other guts. Um, they moved on in their life and their next man or woman don't want to see that. Like, I don't know what's up with Portia. Like she, she knows there's different women's names on her man's body. Um, I don't know. <laughs> If we were to be together for a long time, you know, headed toward marriage, stuff like that. I'm sorry, bro, but you're going to have to cover that up. Put put a dollar sign on there. Put put some bling. Put something on there. Shoot. Put something on there. But anywho, um, and then, you know, what do y'all think about Nene's friend? I thought her name was Tanya, like mine, but her name is Tanya. Um, I know one thing for sure. <laughs> I was really digging her secret closet. She was like, I got a little, you know, she closet kind of, you know, a little closet. And then she said, also, it's kind of like, um, what do you call those closets where somebody's breaking in and, you know, like a panic room, you know, something like that. Um, NeNe had to throw a little shade, though, talking about she expected it to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> but it wasn't like it was meant to be a walk-in closet. I think it was just like, um, because I didn't see any clothes. All I saw was shoes, purses, and that's it. You know, that's about it. But um, I think it was supposed to be more like a, just a little place, you know, where Tanya can hide away, like, you know, a little woman cave. Um, but I did like how it was set up. Shoot, I would have put a fridge in there, um, some wine, some comfortable chairs, and, you know, a book. <laughs> that's all I would have needed. That's it. But um, seriously, Tanya does come off like she's a really nice girl, you know, really fun, you know, person to hang out with. So um, I think she'll work out great with the ladies. But Portia, when Portia came to meet up with Candy, um, I thought her hair was really cute. What y'all think? I was feeling that wig. That wig was giving me life. Um, I think it was... I don't know if it was purple or lavenderish. I don't know, but it was cute. I was like, come through, Portia, with your purple hair. <laughs> but um, although Candy, you know, has really been going on and on and on, you know, going in on Portia's uh, man, Dennis, she was still big enough to invite Portia out for drinks so she can discuss it with her. And, I mean, it was obvious told obvious Portia was pissed when they last met over for drinks Portia was pissed um you know about candy talking about her man every chance she get to everybody who will listen she told candy straight up that she doesn't want to hear anything she has to say about her man so candy was like oh, okay okay you one of those women who don't check for stuff when you hear that your man is doing this, that, and the third. You one of those women, <laughs> one of those women who don't care, don't want to hear it. What you can't see, don't hurt you. <laughs> so Candy was like, okay, cool, cool. But you know what? I did say last week that I do believe that Candy, um, in a roundabout, shady sort of way, um, is really trying to look out for Portia. Because we know, we know that her and Cynthia have had a history of falling head over heels for the wrong type of man. But Portia, you know, she apologized. I mean, Candy, she apologized to Portia. But do y'all believe her when she said that um, she promises? She promises not to mention anything else about Dennis or the tattoos. Mm. I, I don't know. We is talking about candy here. <laughs> we is talking about candy here. And they don't really need no beef. I mean, they had a very, 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 very bad ending um, to their relationship over the last um, season. You know, when it was involving Phaedra and the rumors and the rapes and tried to, you know, get them, you know, drunk, put stuff in their drinks and, you know, take advantage of her and all that, you know, this, that, and the third. So, you know, they had got to a good start at the beginning of this episode, we thought. <laughs> but Candy, she promises, you know, not to say anything else about Dennis. Zip it up, throw it away. <laughs> but okay, y'all, Um, as far as Cynthia, as I was saying earlier, 
<laughs> she is very, very overprotective about her daughter. Um, I'm a mom of two sons. One is in college, and um, the second one is about to graduate from high school and then go to college. But Cynthia, if she don't stop babying her daughter, I mean, she was up there, okay, they at the restaurant, her daughter, they all had like juice. I think it was some kind of juice or something. And Cynthia reaches over, grabs her daughter's drink. Mind you, we talking about a grown woman. Grabs her daughter's drink, starts shaking it up and stuff like, you know, you would do for a little kid. You know, with they orange juice or they milk. <laughs> And then started to open it up, and you know, I'm like, you just if you gonna feed it to her too, is you gonna feed her her food with a fork? But <laughs> and her husband, I mean, not her husband, or her ex, Noel's uh, father. <laughs> he was like, "Come on, Sid, can, can we focus?" I mean, she was over there kissing all over her daughter and leaving lipstick all on the side of her face, and Noel was like, "Oh, mom, come on, stop, that's nasty." What? Cynthia, fall back. <laughs> fall back. I don't know what she is going to do when Noelle leaves off to college. I don't know. Cynthia might try to move down there with her. I'm telling you. But um, again, like I was saying earlier, it's a good thing that Leon, you know, he kind of levels it out because Cynthia's like the pushover, the overprotective, mushy mom, you know. And Leon, oh, that sounds kind of like Kinda, not 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 all mushy and stuff. <laughs> I got boys though, you know. I got boys. Once boys get a certain age, it's like, oh, they be all ready to kiss and hug you all the time, and you know, be all under you all the time. But once they start growing and they get a little bit taller than you, you know, the hugs and the kisses, they still there. But all that mushy, mom, stop! You know, they looking around, mom. <laughs> but um, yeah, she gonna have to stop that. But you know, while she's this overprotective, um push over Leon is more like the enforcer, you know, like the disciplinarian. But um <laughs> he was like, no. Cynthia was like, come on now. She needs a car. She should have I honestly I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know. With my son, I had got him a car. I bought him a car. Um and I didn't he didn't have it his first year. When he first left and went out of town to college, nope, nope. Why? First of all, they was in a small town. I mean, it was, a, it was in the middle of Timbuktu, um, just core. Like, we already in the Midwest. So where they was, it was like miles and miles and miles and miles of cornfields and wheat and all kind of stuff. And then they had this college smack dab in the middle and maybe... I don't know, five minutes away, 10 minutes away, you could drive down to a Walmart, gas stations, restaurants. Nope, you don't need no car. Everything else you need is on campus. And so I understand where Leon was coming from, but Cynthia's like, no, she needs a car. And also, you know, if it were me and I was in college, I would want not a dorm. I don't want an apartment. I want my own place where I can sit on my own toilet. I'm like, are you serious? First of all, I don't think any females... In college, should be living off campus by themselves. <laughs> not at all. I can see off campus, not too far from campus, um, in like a two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, you know, sharing it with other, you know, girls, but not by themselves. All the stuff that be going on in college, please. <laughs> not wishing anything bad, but you know what I'm saying, Sue. So you got to be safe. And it's a lot safer to be around, you know, other people than be by yourself. So, anywho, we'll see how that um, works out. But um, what did y'all think about Nimi's and Greg Shindig? Um, first of all, I want to say, I think it is really, really, really nice um, how we saw Greg just so happy, uh, so vibrant. Um, he was so full of high spirits. And don't y'all think he looked good? I mean, I thought he looked really, really great. I mean, to have been through, you know, everything that he's going through with the cancer and battling the cancer, then the doctors letting him know last um, episode that, you know, after the microscopic test, that they found more cancer cells. Um, they didn't say on this episode if he changed his mind and decided to um, do chemo. Now, he said it a few times before that he did not want to do chemo. Um, the doctors, 
they're kind of like, you know, telling them, you know, where we really recommend you do this. But in the end, it's always up to the patient, you know, what they decide. So they didn't, you know, reveal that information or anything. So maybe they'll talk about that next week. But um, again, he was looking really good and, you know, really happy and like everything is, you know, on the up and up. So that's good. And so they decided to have a little party. And the name of the party was called, uh, was it Boo? Either Booze and Boobs <laughs> or Boobs and Booze. <laughs> Either way, you know, um, the ladies, when they came to the party, they was looking good. They had their little dresses on and, you know, their hair did and things looking really beautiful. Um, and all of them had, you know, showing a lot of cleavage, you know, the ones that got some, you know, the other ones, they were showing what they had, but <laughs> they really had their boobs out there and everything because it was called booze and boobs. So you're supposed to, you know, work what you got, you know, show off your little, you know, your little cleavage and everything. But anywho, um, all the ladies showed up, including Tanya and what was that other one named? Yavana. Yavana. And I guess these are, you know, the new ladies that Nene invited on to the show. But um, that one lady, Yavana, what the heck is her name? Yavana? Um, I, I was giving her the side eye, like really, like all through the show. Um, she kept asking for more drinks. Is this all we got? What else do you got? I mean, she was up there like on 10 from the jump. She walked in, sat down talking about, tell that bitch to give me another drink. I was like, who is she talking to? She was talking to the waitress. Talking about, tell her that bitch to bring me another drink. I'm like, did she really... Did she really address... I mean, she literally just walked in the room sat down, asking for liquor, trying to drink all the liquor at the table, and then said, bitch, bring me another drink. I thought that was so disrespectful. Um, But didn't nobody say nothing. Like, didn't nobody say, you know, why you say that? Or, you know, that's that's rude. Didn't nobody say nothing. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. But, um, then when they, um, and when she introduced her, when Nene introduced her to Eva, she had her nose all turned up at Eva. Like, they got beef. I was like, okay, now what's this about? Eva was like, hi, nice to meet you. You know, all, you know, happy and pleasant and, you know, nice. And she was like, just giving shade, like shade trees, like for real. I was like, okay, they, they, they must got some kind of beef that we don't know nothing about, but hopefully they'll get to it. But, um, as far as Dennis, you know, Portia's man, Candy was kind of concerned, you know, because of, you know, all the talking that she's been doing behind <laughs> him and Portia's back about, you know, the tattoos and all the women and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So she thought that Dennis might come up in there, you know, kind of upset or, you know, giving her the side eye or, you know, trying to tell her how he feel about herself. But he was actually really, really polite, and really friendly and pleasant. I mean, extra pleasant. He gave her a kiss. He gave her a hug. I mean, he was just hugging all the ladies and everything. I was like, okay, maybe he's just going to push that under the rug and, you know, forget like it ever happened because Portia did say, okay, we going to let go of this beef. So maybe, you know, he feels the same way. But he was really, really pleasant. And then Eva's man, Michael, he was also, you know, uh, he was giving him props, giving Dennis props, saying, you know what, this guy is a really good guy. He's a great person. When all these other uh, businesses kept telling him not to do business with me, he didn't listen to them. And he still gave me a chance was doing business with me. So I was like, okay, that's what's up, Dennis. <laughs> that's what's up. You know, no matter how many tattoos or different women names he got on his body, um, he seems like a really cool dude. But um, Portia, she was up there. Oh, Dennis, really? See, he wouldn't do that. Oh, she was just so proud and beamy and patting her man on the back. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. But yeah, she was feeling really prideful about her man, Dennis. But that Yovana, again, I still can't believe she called her bitch. Like, she called, okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone right now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone right now. But um, Nene, 
she asked them, you know, she wanted to play, you know, a fun little game. So they went around and all the couples, you know, was telling everybody, you know, how they met and everything. And like with Candy, I can remember like it was yesterday when the ladies went to Africa and Todd was there. And I remember that man, the African bone doctor, you know, he was reading her her future and told her, you know what, you're going to get married. And Candy was like, you know, Candy, like, really? <laughs> she get that face like, really? But uh, and he said, and your husband has always near you. Like, that was really, really crazy. She had no idea that Todd was the man that he was referring to. And during that trip, Todd was around him a lot. So, you know, I don't know. Those fortune tellers, you know, they might know a little something, something. Shoot, she got married. <laughs> got married. They're still together. They got a little boy. So, you know, who I'm trying to move this string under my shirt. But, um, yeah, so anyway, and then Eva's story was funny, too. You know how her fiancé, Michael, you know, he said he was hosting a fundraiser. Um, and he had mentioned to Eva that he hadn't had a good home cooked meal in a while. Now y'all know, y'all ladies done tried it. Y'all know y'all done tried that line on a man at least one good time. He was like, I told her I ain't had a good meal in a while. She was like, um, I can cook. I can cook. Y'all know y'all be, I can cook. I show can burn in that kitchen. Show can. Won't you come over and find out? <laughs> that's the best way to a man's heart at least that's what they say shoot if you can't cook in the kitchen honey mm, i don't know what to tell you <laughs> i don't know what to tell you but anyway um i thought that was really cute and then uh back to miss yavana i think <laughs> i'm beginning to think that she must have came to the party already on one already drinking before the party or high or something. She was like really on a 10 and pissed off because Eva said she doesn't remember her from high school. Eva was like, I don't know you. I don't know her. Who this girl, Harpo? <laughs> Who this girl? But um, the lady Tiffany, who they both know, um, Yvonne was like, my good friend Tiffany you know her. She knows you. And she was like, oh, Tiffany. Uh, Eva was like, yeah, she's at my wedding. Okay, so Eva knows Tiffany. Yavana knows Tiffany. But Eva don't know Yavana. And Yavana was pissed. She was like, I just don't get it. How you gonna act like you don't know me? Oh, uh, she was big mad, y'all. She was big mad. Like, okay. Then she tried to say, um... <laughs> She tried to say that she was the shit in high school. She was the bitch in high school. I was like, okay, and Eva doesn't remember you? Um, Okay, I'm going to tell you like this. How many of y'all have went to school with somebody and you do not remember them? If you saw them on the street, you'd be like, hmm, that person looks familiar. What is their name? I don't, you know, maybe we went to high school. You might not remember them, but um, she was talking all this mess, talking about I'm in high school. I was that bitch. Um, why you act like you don't remember me? Eva was like, uh, I, I, again, Harpo, who this woman? <laughs> Like, who this woman? But I'm going to tell y'all, I remember all, I went to the same high school all four years, ninth grade to 12th grade, same high school. I remember all of the really popular people in my high school, like all of them, the ones who would probably get away with saying I was that bitch or I was that dude, you know, in, in high school. I remember all of them. Why? Do I remember all of them? Because I hung around all of them. <laughs> I was a social butterfly, thus my YouTube channel. <laughs> I've always been a very social, like really social butterfly. I'm the one in the family, well, one of few in the family. I ain't going to say I'm the only one, but I'm one of few in the family who always, like throughout the years, throwing parties, birthdays, every birthday, every kid, every year, get-togethers, barbecues. I mean, we turns up. I'm just a social butterfly. Um, I was in, in high school. I was in music, chorus, you know, several clubs, African-American history club. I mean, I can name a few. Um, and I went to all the games, like football basketball, I mean, track, we went to everything, so 
I remember a lot of people from high school and a lot of them to this day are my Facebook friends. I have hundreds of uh, hundreds of people on my Facebook that I went to high school with and on Instagram. So now I'm wondering if Yavana was really that bitch. If she was really that bitch in high school or was she just a bitch <laughs> in high school? <laughs> But I'm like, come on now. Eva don't remember you? Uh, no, I don't think you was all that in high school. But anywho, um, y'all, when Portia was pretending, can, can Portia cook, y'all? I think Portia can cook. I think I witnessed her cooking before on the show. I just can't remember right now. But anyway, when she was pretending like she was actually cooking Dennis a birthday meal, he came walling down that staircase. I was like, what do Dennis got on? He was wearing that too little, too tight Detroit hoodie. I was like, if you don't take that kitty size hoodie off, Dennis, that that was a hot mess. I that was I don't even know how he got how he put I don't know. <laughs> he was too big for that dog old hoodie. But then, like I had said last week, when uh, remember when we saw the previews, Portia had gave him some boxes. For his birthday and in one of the boxes it has some little baby sneakers in it and i said i bet in the box was also a pregnancy test in there and yes it was he she gave him the boxes for his presents it had a little pair of cute little i don't know if they was jordans but there was some cute little sneakers and then she gave her i mean she gave him the pregnancy test you know showing it was positive she was like um i'm pregnant and he sat there and he was like, he just started smiling. He was happy. I mean, it was like, he was crying. Oh, man, see, that's how every woman wants their man to be. <laughs> when you tell them you're pregnant. <laughs> like, not like, oh, what? We pregnant? Oh, oh, damn. Uh, For real? Uh, Is it mine? No. <laughs> But yeah, he was happy. I am really happy for Portia though because she has been wanting a baby. She has been wanting a family for a very, very, very long time. And she didn't have some rough relationships in the past. A crazy, crazy divorce. So she deserves it. She deserves it. She deserves to be happy. And I really think her and Dennis are truly happy. I really do. And um, as far as like real life time, uh, you know, in real life time, that's what I'm going to say. Um, Portia is far along in her pregnancy. Um, in the show, it seems like she's probably about maybe a month or two, maybe um, in her pregnancy. But of course, you know, in real life time, you know, outside of the TV show, the reality show. She should be having that baby any time now. <laughs> any time now. So I do want to, again, congratulate Portia Williams and Dennis McKinley on their newly expected baby. And I think it's going to be, did she say? I don't know if she said it was a boy or a girl. Y'all let me know. Um, If y'all know if it will be a boy or if it's going to be a girl. Y'all let me know. <laughs> But anyway, also let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Um, what y'all think about that girl, Yavana? Man, when she told them, if y'all don't still let me say what the hell I got to say. I mean, she was going off. I'm like, okay, girl, bring it down. Bring it down. <laughs> she was a bit much. And this is who Nene brought into the group. I'm like, okay. Okay, let's see how this girl works. I, I don't know. I can't wait to the next episode. But anyway, let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Put it in the chats. Um, again, on YouTube, Tanya Knows No Limit and Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. And the people on YouTube, you can also follow me on Instagram, Tanya Primetime TV. But make sure you click the like button. Make sure you click the subscribe button. And also make sure you please share the video. Share it on your social media platforms, Facebook, Internet, and Twitter. <laughs> thank you and I appreciate that. And thank you all for tuning into the live. Those of you on Instagram and those of you on YouTube who are watching me right now, thank you for tuning into the live. And in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay blessed. Be safe, be safe, 
stay blessed, <laughs> all that. And so, and until we meet again, I'm out. Peace.